Today's show is brought to you by Privacy.com, the ultimate tool to protect your info with virtual cards for online transactions. Stay tuned to see how you can get $5 free from Privacy.com. Car burglaries and thefts are an ongoing problem all across the world. There are some as-seen-on-TV gadgets that claim to make your car safe and secure. But how do you know which ones are super and which ones are stinkers? Well, we're going to show you right now. Do you have a newer style wireless key fob like this? You know, one where you can start the car without inserting a key in the ignition? Well, you are susceptible to a fairly new type of car burglary and theft called a key fob relay attack. And here's how it works. When you approach your car, it transmits an authentication code trying to communicate with your key fob. You see the first thief pulls on the handle of the car, which triggers that communication looking for the right key code. That thief transmits that communication from the car to his partner's device who is by the house trying to communicate with the key fob inside the house up to around 30 feet away. That communication is sent to the key fob, which transmits back the correct response to him. Then he transmits that back to the thief standing by the car. The car thinks it's talking to the key fob and lets the guy get in the car. Then the second thief walks away to reset the communication, repeats the process, which tells the car the key fob is present and allows the first thief to start the car and steal it. There's potentially only one way to prevent this from happening while you're at home, and that would be to keep your car safe and secure inside of a garage. But not everyone has that luxury. So our first product claims to be a cheap and easy way to prevent a key fob relay attack. It's called TCON, Car Key and Credit Card Signal Blocker. So let's see what's inside this box, and we pull out two little pouches. They're a little bit larger than my key fob, and they both have little clips on them and they claim to block RFID and NFC signals which would in turn prevent a key fob relay attack. So let's check these out and test them. So here I am with my key fob and I'll just set them on the trunk here and then try to get into my car. And you can see the front door is not cooperating. I'll walk over to the back door and try the back door and it doesn't work either. So let me grab my keys, go back to the front door and voila, I'm allowed in because the car sees my key fob. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove the key fob from my keychain and I'll put it into the little T-Con pouch, close it up and approach my car. nothing doing. This is actually blocking the signal going to the car, even being this close. Now just simply removing my key fob from the T-Con pouch and I'm back in. So to further my testing, I thought I'd try just an ordinary Altoid style tin, putting my key fob inside, but nope, that did not block the RFID signal. Lastly, I decided to try an aluminum drink cup, so dropping my key fob inside, closing the top, and that did block the RFID signal. So you could use these to drop all of your keys inside instead of just hanging them in your house. But overall, the T-Con signal blockers are pretty neat. They would prevent a key fob relay attack on your car, so they get a thumbs up. Now, in case your car does get broken into, this next product claims to be a deterrent. It's called Technax, a car alarm with a charging function. Let's pop open the box and see what's inside. Well, this looks like a regular cigarette lighter adapter. It has two USB ports on it, what looks like a light at the very end. And there's also a small little remote that comes with it. Hmm, let's check this thing out. So right off the bat, a lot of newer cars don't even have cigarette lighters. In fact, mine has a 12 volt cigarette lighter style adapter, but it's in the center console. So we'll have to use that to test this out. As soon as I plugged it in, it beeped one time and then one press of the remote syncs the remote to the Technax alarm and then pressing it again arms it. Then any movement 
and it fires off the 110 decibel alarm. I decided to just go ahead and unplug this annoying thing and I was surprised it continued to scream at me. So I plugged it back in and it killed the siren. Oops. And in one last test while it was going off, I decided to close my car door and I couldn't even hear that thing. While this might be an inexpensive alternative for a cheap deterrent, I did not like it. The fact that you could unplug it and plug it back in and it shuts off defeats the whole purpose of it. So, sorry Technax, you get a big fat stinker. Up next is something called Bouncy. So let's pop open the box and see what bounces out. Ah, oh, sneaky. It's one of those boxes inside a box inside a box. Immediately, I know there's an app involved, so let's flip over the flaps and get to the bouncy. Oh, there it is. It's a little plastic module with male pins that I assume plugs into your car. So I downloaded the app, and the first thing it wants me to do is scan my VIN, or vehicle identification number. Now, I tried a few times, and it just would not scan, so I decided to manually input my VIN, and it took a second or two and found my vehicle. It was just a matter of naming the vehicle and putting in the miles, or thereabouts, and the next step is to enter the number on the bouncy. It's a special six-digit code that's unique to each of the bouncies. When that's done, it's ready to activate. Now it's eight bucks a month, so I'm gonna try it for one month, and to make everything safe and secure, I'm gonna run my privacy app, and then I'll create a single-use card, which is linked to my business checking account, give that a name, Bouncy, and I'm all ready to pay for it. That's the best thing about privacy.com. I can create a burner card, use it one time, delete it, and never have to worry about getting charged again for a subscription service or a trial. Privacy.com is perfect for making purchases anywhere online, especially on websites you're unfamiliar with or have never used before. And they use military-grade encryption, which means all your sensitive information is secure. In fact, it's so secure that I don't even mind showing you this credit card number because I've already deleted the card. And you can fill out all your virtual credit card information in a blink of an eye with Privacy.com's Chrome extension. So there's really no reason not to try Privacy.com's free service. In fact, all of my fans are going to get $5 to spend on your first purchase. Go to privacy.com slash Kip K and get your $5 free from privacy.com. I use it all the time and I think you're going to love it too. It's privacy.com slash Kip K. The last step is to install the bouncy and that gets plugged into your OBD or onboard diagnostics port. Then it's just a matter of driving. After the initial few trips are recorded, I was able to see all kinds of information about my car, and most importantly, for this video, to keep my car secure, it gives me complete information about where the car has been driven and where it stopped last. So, in case of a theft, you can track your vehicle. Plus, this thing does all kinds of stuff as far as setting up a geo circle, speed alerts, hard braking, trip fuel economy, and more. But as far as keeping your car safe, or at least knowing where your car is, if it were ever stolen, it looks like the Bouncy is a pretty neat little gadget. So I'll give it a shiny thumbs up. And last up on our list of car security gadgets is the Solar Burglar Proof Light. Inside the little package is a little module with some sticky tape on the back. It also has a little power switch and a USB port for charging, I'm assuming. The instructions say to do that first, so I'll plug it in and get this thing charged. After it was charged, I brought it out to my car. Now, it's got a blue flashing light that is supposed to mimic an actual car security system. The light only comes on at night, which serves to conserve energy, and it's got a little mini solar panel inside that keeps it charged during the day. It's fairly bright at night, but this truly is the poor man's security gadget. It could be a deterrent for an older car that doesn't already have a security system like mine. And for the price, well, it's just like a sign that says, beware of dog. 
So I'm kind of a sucker for anything LED, and it is kind of a cute little gadget. And for the price, it could possibly be a deterrent against a car break-in. So the solar burglar-proof light gets a thumbs up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's As Seen on TV car security gadgets as much as I enjoyed making it. If you'd like to check out more of my reviews and other content, hey, just click one of the boxes on the screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.